My Chemical Romance is a curse song that they do not want to play. Let's talk about it. So My Chemical Romance, it's pretty much one of the greatest bands out there. Known for their emo, gothic, aesthetic, and incredibly creative and unique music, they've got hits like Welcome to the Black Parade, I'm Not Okay, Teenagers, etc. However, there's still a lot of My Chemical Romance music that is more obscure despite their size, and we're going to be taking a look at one of their songs that they may want to forget about. But before we do that, here's just a quick word from our sponsor, Atlas VPN. So, do you want me to just throw my voice, or...? No, man. Not necessary. The mic works fine. Dixie knows everything. Now, let's get started. So, you claim to be a real mummy? Claim? Don't try your luck, son. I drain the life force out of mortals ten times your stature. Yeah, that's right. Hide behind your phone, little girl. You think it'll keep you safe? Back in the early 1990s, I mastered the art of spreading my curse via the means of computer viruses. Remember the I love you virus? That was me. Bonzi buddy? Me. You are an idiot? Me. But also apparently you. Yeah. You. It was going great. Curses left and right. But then people started getting smart to my ways. The worst thing to have come between me and my curse is Atlas VPN. I can't keep up. Atlas VPN can be used on unlimited devices, further spreading its protection against my curses. Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN not only blocks all of my annoying pop ups, but it also blocks all the malicious links, ads, and trackers, and notifies you if I'm somebody is trying to steal your data it's the stupid price that really did me in atlas vpn is the most affordable vpn on the market and it's made even cheaper when using the raymundo 2112 associate link yeah honey what you looking at their privacy is top notch top notch to do this, we have to go all the way back to 2001. It was a September morning, and a man named Gerard Way was riding the Staten Island Ferry, and out of nowhere, a plane hit the World Trade Center. He didn't see it hit, but he saw the towers fall. He described it as being something that was out of a disaster movie. Right then and there, he decided that the world needed something better, and so he put together My Chemical Romance. Their first song, titled Skylines and Turnstiles, is about the attacks of 9-11, and really displays all of the trauma, and sadness and distrust that the American people had back in 2001, but also serves as a call for something better, for a peaceful world, for a happier people. They put together an EP dubbed Dreams of Stabbing and or Being Stabbed, containing five songs. This EP would be the blueprints for their first album, I Brought You My Bullets, You Brought Me Your Love, one of the songs on this EP being Wish You Away which later turned out to be Drowning Lessons, the titular cursed song. However, this demo of Drowning Lessons is actually lost to media. Both the songs Stabbing and Wish You Away have never been heard, or at least uploaded onto the internet. So let's take a look at Drowning Lessons, from the actual album I Brought You My Bullets, You Brought Me Your Love. The song starts out incredibly punchy, but with a somewhat somber and sad tone. fast-paced and somewhat upbeat, but the guitar riff portrays such a complicated emotion, one of grief, regret, and even a little bit of hope. It almost portrays the feeling of things getting so bad, that but then there's a small glimmer of hope, things are up for a second, but then they go right back down. It's just a cycle. We then hear our first verse. These lyrics portray themes of a wedding and love. We then hear the chorus. We 
hear more wedding imagery with the rice grains and the roses, but a kiss goodbye to someone's twisted shell to me seems like a final kiss before someone passes away. From what we can tell, this man's lover has died, and he keeps replaying the memory or the day over and over in his head, imagining a wedding where everything could be okay, but everything continues, just the same as it's been. She's gone. Our second verse reads, I dragged her down, I put her out, and back there I left her where no one could see. And lifeless cold into this well, I stared as this moment was held for me. These lyrics are interpreted in a few different ways. Initially, a lot of people think that this man killed his wife. He left her where no one could see, lifeless. However, to me, these lyrics hold a deeper meaning. And we'll get into that in a second. Our third verse reads, I never thought it'd be this way, just me and you here alone. And if you say, all I'm asking for it, a thousand bodies by your nose. I never thought would be enough to show you just what I've been thinking. To me, these lines represent that this man is willing to do absolutely anything to bring his wife back. Anything at all. Even killing a thousand people, stacking their bodies up just to prove that there is no feat big enough that he wouldn't do to bring back his lover. And I'll keep on making more just to prove that I adore every inch of sanity. All I'm asking for is... All I'm asking for is... These lyrics to me represent that this man is feeling crazy over what happened to his wife. Whether he's the one who killed her or not. It haunts him. The memory keeps replaying in his head and there's nothing he can do about it. All he wants is to get her back. These next lyrics really kind of confirm the interpretation of it being him who killed her. Lyrics mention him killing her multiple times, because it keeps replaying in his head. His hands are stained red from all the times her blood has been there. The next lyrics to me represent him wishing that they could at least go out together, washing down their engagement rings with poison and kerosene. At least they would be laughing and in each other's embrace in their final minutes. The outro goes, without a sound, without a sound, and I wish you away. Continues to repeat this. To me, these lyrics represent him wishing that he could just wish away all of his feelings and not have to think about her anymore, not have to feel all this grief and sadness, but unfortunately it's not that simple. My Chemical Romance only ever played this song a handful of times, and the few times that they did, things would go wrong. Either an amp would break, someone would get hurt, or a drum would break, or just things like everyone would start the song at different times and it wouldn't go well. This led them to consider the song cursed and stopped playing it. Even during My Chemical Romance's 2022 tour, where they've played most of the songs from I Brought You My Bullets, You Brought Me Your Love, we haven't heard Drowning Lessons once. Which, I actually went there. Check out this shirt. It was an incredible experience. I would do it again. They played Desert Song. It was amazing. <laughs> To me, this song isn't about a man killing his lover. It's about the death of her, but he's not the one who did it. But he almost blames himself for it. Fans believe this song is addressed to a woman by the name of Kat, who was believed to be an ex-girlfriend of Gerard. We know very, very little about this. The only thing we really know is a mention of her. There's a side note in Bullets reading, 2K, I'm sorry I wrote all this stuff about killing you. I hope the last song makes up for it. This last song being Demolition Lovers, which is a song about a couple who are criminals. The song ends in a hell of bullets of them both getting gunned down. These two characters of the Demolition Lovers end up being the main characters of the next album, Three Cheers for Street Revenge, which has a loose story tied to it. They're also the same couple who's on the album art, which maybe I should make a video on that album. Let me know if you guys want to see that. So who was Kat? Well, we really don't know. We don't even know if she was necessarily who this is about. But let's just stick with that for a second. The time that they were playing the song, Gerard Way was in a really bad state, both mentally and physically. He had a lot of substance abuse problems, and these really affected his personal life, and I'd assume his relationships as well. Perhaps while Kat was with him, she got brought down because he was such a mess. The lyrics, I dragged her down, I put her out, and back there I left her what no one could see could represent Gerard's interpretation of how she felt, being dragged down by how low he was, and how bad he felt. Obviously, if this is the case, this song is really one of a lot of guilt and grief. Maybe he broke up with her, or she broke up with him. The song is a really dark take on love, in my opinion. 
There's also a much more tragic interpretation of these lyrics that involve this ex-girlfriend. Some fans think that this woman ended up taking her own life, and that's what the song is based off of. All these themes are guilt, is because Gerard feels as though he caused it, as though he could have done something different. Those memories keep replaying in his head. Perhaps he wanted to marry this woman, which is why there's such a theme of marriage. People in toxic and abusive relationships often feel like they are drowning, which could also represent the name of the song being Drowning Lessons. A few of the songs on Bullets have a theme to the ending of one's life by their own means, with it being very obvious in Head First for Halos, which has reference to red and blue pills. Now these are often thought to be a reference to the Matrix, obviously. However, if we link it back to this song, some of the first lyrics mention being dressed in red and blue. In Head First for Halos, we hear the lyrics, and now these red ones make me fly, and the blue ones help me fall, which to me seems like he's describing drugs. The next lyrics being, and I think I blow my brains against the ceiling. Perhaps while on drugs like this, Gerard was in a state that was very unstable. Some these red pills would make him super high and feel great, but then the blue ones would make him fall and feel terrible. Dressed in red and blue he squeezed. Perhaps he feels like he maybe took her down because of this addiction. And that's where these lyrics come from. I can't be sure about this, I'm just kind of throwing out some theories here. But we do have information saying that Gerard doesn't want to play the song anymore, both because of the technical difficulties, but mostly because it's a deeply personal song to him. And to me, I can hear it. The song is so tragic, and it's got so much emotion behind it. To me, one of the most beautiful parts of the song is actually the ending. After the final lyrics, the song goes kind of quiet, and it's just guitar and a ride cymbal. After this riff, we then hear the guitar and drums come in in full force, but instead of sounding as miserable as the guitars did before, it sounds like there's a little gleam of hope there. They still sound tragic, but things seem to look like they're going up. This feels like a final glimmer of hope in an otherwise hopeless scenario. Perhaps this represents whoever this song is based off of, doing better, or even Gerard himself. They really haven't spoken about this song much, and for good reason. I'm not trying to say that anything I said in this video is definitely true, because it's really all just speculation. But I wanted to bring more attention to what I think is one of their most beautiful songs, and explain why they believe that it's cursed. I Brought You My Bullets, You Brought Me Your Love is an incredibly beautiful and tragic album. If you haven't listened to it, I'd highly recommend you would. In my personal opinion, I find it very underrated and very overlooked. The sound of the album is a lot more punk rock than it is pop punk. It's very Misfits and Black Flag inspired, so it's got a much more rough and gritty feel to it. The production quality also isn't as good as it is in their later albums, which turns some people off to it. However, I really like this about this album. It's actually my second favorite My Chemical Romance album, right behind Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. I'd also just like to say that as of now, Gerard Way is sober, and he's doing great for himself. He's really turned his life around and he's a much happier man for it, and I'm really happy to see it, to be completely honest. It's amazing to see MCR return, and see them on tour, and hear Foundations of Decay. It all just warms my heart, really. The band's incredibly special to me, and has been there in some of the biggest moments of my life, and I've got to thank them for that. Alright, so that wraps it up for the explanation of Drowning Lessons. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, because I enjoyed making it. And to all the new faces in the audience, which I'm sure there'll be a good few, I'm Raimundo, I make creepy videos about a whole variety of topics, and I'm a big fan of My Chemical Romance, if you, if you couldn't uh, tell already, I've got a lot of uh, MCR stuff on this door. <laughs> If you're wondering about the costume, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's Halloween season, so every video I'll have a different costume. I'm currently emo Anakin Skywalker. We got the Three Cheers shirt, Three Cheers pins, little, little Skell Animals dog, uh, got a studded belt on, um, it's great. Flat ironed hair, everything. For all those who are fans of My Chemical Romance, I've actually got a really cool thing to offer you guys to come see, and that is Smells Like Halloween Spirit, which is a Halloween live show that I'm actually hosting on October 28th, 2022. Check out this poster. See, it's three cheers, but with Boba Fett. Pretty, pretty badass, if you ask me. It's gonna be a variety show, mostly being rock music, and you're gonna see me play with my band, Polybius. 
I'll be playing some MCR tunes myself, alongside hosting the entire show for everyone. If you're in New York, come see this show. I highly, highly recommend it. And hey, even if that's not your scene, then you at least get to meet me and we can talk. I really hope to see you all there. When it comes to drowning lessons, I don't want to say that everything that I said in this video is objective fact or not objective fact. It's really more of a speculation. I don't want to start an official narrative as to how things are seen in terms of that song or anything like that. Simply made this video so I could discuss something that I found interesting and shed more light on it. If you'd like to see more My Chemical Romance content, please let me know in the comments because I'm more than willing to make some. And I'm really happy to hear all the feedback. Do you like my eyes? They're pretty cool, I like them. If you've got any fan art of me or my characters, you can just go on my Discord server, which is linked in the description, and display them. And hey, you might even get them officially installed onto the wall slash door. All the art here is made by fans and it's awesome. Happy Halloween everyone and that's about it for me from this video and I'll see you all in the next one.